Yo guys, what is going on? Welcome back to the YouTube channel. Today, we are going to be taking a look at basically my advice on how to get the best start possible in FIFA 22. There's a lot of variables regarding this because a lot of you guys are going to be starting at different points in the game. This is also going to be a really long video, but in the past, I have done this video most years and I feel like I've done it different ways and I feel like this year is going to be a really good year because this video should be very understandable to every single person that clicks on it and that's going to be my point of it. I'm really going to not dumb it down, but just make it understandable uh, for any type of i guess trader gameplay grinder any of you guys out there to really give you guys the best advice possible here thank you guys for the all the support in the channel man almost every single video has been blowing up and i'm just really excited to kind of really invest a lot of my energy into content this year really really working on improving that and i i, I finally have the time and the energy to do so so it is uh it is a big smile on my face when i see that you guys are really enjoying the videos we are going to keep them rolling but we're going to get right into this video without further ado guys officially i'm recording this video on saturday for me at least uh, we have four days until FIFA 22 drops, till I can at least play it. Um, so yeah, very excited, guys, and let's get into it. So first of all, guys, something I wanted to go over with you guys uh, before we get into anything today. I made a video the other day talking about the ones to watch player pick, and unfortunately, EA actually messed up, but they didn't announce that they messed up for about two days. So this is really unfortunate. I did have a jab at them. I'm not really going to try to spread negativity here. They basically, and if you're confused, usually the pre-order reward uh, for the ones to watch pack is a it's a ones to watch pack but this year was a ones to watch pick apparently they messed up the wording you know it's it is sad to see because i think a lot of people probably bought the ultimate edition now that they saw that it was a player pick because a player pick out of 11 ones to watch players would have been crazy um so they've gone back on their word they said now it's back to a pack so i just wanted to update you guys that it is a one of 11 or a one of 14 or a one of 28 whatever type of uh i guess team you'd choose to select that on and another thing before we get into the video today i wanted to show you guys this this is pretty cool um in foot 22 it looks like and this has to do with this video that's why it's coming up all right you guys already know man that's why i'm gonna talk about it um there's apparently going to be quick sell values for loan cards so apparently loan uh, loan sun is quick selling for 9k I, I i don't know how how much accuracy there is to this um this is coming from a guy that, that does tweet out some stuff this would be crazy if this is actually in the game I am going to bet that this is an EA mistake. I think it's going to be a mistake on EA's part because look, man, if we're getting all these loans in the beginning, we're, it's going to be a lot of coins. It's going to be, if you get like five loans and Sun is 9K and you get loans on that level, 89-ish rated, if it's going by rating, man, that's a lot of coins. So look out for that. That's a big variable. Um, obviously, if that is true, a lot of you guys will have coins, but that doesn't mean that this video wouldn't benefit you because if everybody has coins off loans, then you're all going to have to try to figure out still, even with 100K, how to get ahead of each other. So first of all, guys, last year in, in my... Uh, in my analysis of how to get the best start one of my best examples was when you get on that ea access just play division rivals only play gameplay because basically what ea had done last year is you had five placement matches and the coins were crazy if you got actually promoted all the way up to division one you would have gotten like 40 60 80 maybe in div 2 and then 100k in div 1 the coins that were actually given last year i remember i placed into division 4 i think or division 3 and i got 125,000 coins i think it was division 4 um, and I won all five of my games. So that was a thing last year. This year, we do not have placement matches. Um, that that is a that is a major difference. This is obviously the FIFA 21, you know, ultimate team deep dive that I want to look at. But something that I want to talk about FIFA 22 that's going to be different with division rivals is everybody's going to start in division 10. And the way that rivals is working is there's a lot of milestones. There's a lot of progressions. So what I am thinking is that even if you are starting to div 10, you should probably still invest some of your time early on right when you jump out to those first couple hours and play rivals because you're going to probably have uh, some starter packs, some milestones that you can obtain and all that stuff in the beginning. It does go a long way. It really, 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 really does. So a couple of things that I wanted to show you guys. Number one, it, the best way to learn from the years before is going back and looking at things that you did and, and kind of talking about how you started. So um, this was my FIFA 21 uh, start here. And what you can see is I'm on the web app. And this is the really important part. For anybody that's on EA Access, spend your time setting up your club on the web app. Now, the way EA Access work, works this year, I think there is going to be 20 hours. Everybody's saying no, now it's not 20 if you have the PS5, I do think if you have next gen, you'll be able to play the old and new. Um, I don't see why not. But in that case that you still only have 10 or even 20, you want to spend your hours on console really wisely. And I know that sounds like a stupid tip, um, but even a person of myself, like I am doing that. And what I mean by a person of myself is that year after year, this is going to be a complete flex. I'm finishing in the top of the leaderboards. And the reason I do that is not because of the time spent. It's because of the efficiency that I put into whether it's my hours that are restricted, uh, my time a week that I am spending where I need to try to make coins because I'm not dropping the dough. Uh, on FIFA and this year I, a lot of you guys are asking me Nick how are you going to spend your money this year so basically what I'm doing is a road to glory like normal I'm, I got my ultimate edition FIFA points which we'll talk about that in a second that will be a very major theme of this video because it is important so right away you guys can see 
I'm getting back into it. And in the top right corner, I'm gonna keep you guys updated. There's zero coins. So we have no coins in the top right corner. We're just logging back. Twitch chat is asking, Nick, when do I sell my inform Ben Yetter? I don't like the menu colors. Nick, can you play a game? And I'm on the web app and they're asking me to play a game. But this is a typical Twitch chat and YouTube. Guys, all right, listen, man, don't be asking those questions to, for me to play the game when I'm on the web app because it's, look, how could I do that? It's impossible. So I'm looking at my starter team. I've got my Sonaldo loan in there. Obviously, what you're gonna see me do first is the let's get started SPCs. Do these all on the web app. SPCs take a while. And if you guys are like me and you're shit at SPCs, I am probably the world's worst SPC doer. Yeah, it, I am, period. Don't do SPCs on console because your time is very limited. Unless you guys are an EA game changer getting the game unlimited hours, don't do it on console. I don't care if it looks pretty. I don't care if it's easier. Do it on web app grind it out if you need somebody to grind it out with guys i will be on the web app early on and i will probably look like an idiot because most creators on this game will be playing the game and aesthetically it looks better but you can come grind with me because i'm i'm like you guys man this is what i got and this is how we're gonna roll together this year so this is what you guys got to do right let's get started all that you're gonna get a couple packs basically what ends up happening is not that these packs really sell for a lot but you can start to recycle them you can recycle them into silver upgrades into gold upgrades start to get a couple players potentially to use and put in SBCs. So obviously you guys can see, it literally took me four edited minutes to do three bronze SBCs. Now, if you don't know what I mean by that, it means it probably took me 35 minutes in real life if it's four edited minutes to do three bronze SBCs. Yes, you can laugh at me, but it's true. And it's pretty sad. So I would have wasted 35 minutes at EA Access if I was doing that on console, all right? So listen, now we're on the store. We've got all these bronze reward packs. And what you're gonna see is that you do get some packs back for playing FIFA in previous years. So obviously guys, if you're a person that is just going onto a new console, you're at a little bit of a disadvantage. You're probably not gonna have the same packs that I had here. Boom, you can see I packed 84 ISCO and I wanted to freeze frame this right here, okay? This is gonna come up as a question in the comments. Nick, would you keep or sell that? Guys, I'm checking the market, ISCO's 9K, sell it, sell it, sell it, sell it. I used to be under the impression and it even was true back in the day a little bit in FIFA, don't sell every, don't, sometimes keep it sometimes don't sell everything and that does apply still in fifa but in the beginning of the game unless you have like a really really meta player that's super undervalued sell it isco's not really a meta player we're gonna take the coins we're gonna get it out of there also go through list of contracts check out uh non-rare gold that's always sometimes those guys are going for a k and you guys will be really surprised and we're gonna talk about a crazy thing in a minute uh that i'm gonna kind of walk you guys through because it is crazy so obviously open our packs we're getting our gold players pack we're listing most of these players some of them were quick selling and that's also something i'm gonna tell you guys it is very important to get a base of coins early on don't just list every single non-rare check the market if the non-rare is hardly selling 50 coins over the discard get rid of it quick sell it get the coins because a lot of these welcome backpacks are tradable okay now you're seeing I'm getting the, well, you can't see, I'm up to 13K literally just by opening my welcome backpacks. We sell Isco. Okay, this is what's really important for you guys to check out, okay? So basically early on, once people do the uh, let's get started SBCs, everybody starts doing advanced SBCs. Advanced SBCs is the League of Nation hybrids, the hybrid leagues, you guys can go look at it right now. They're not that hard to do. There's tons of flipping solutions. Go ahead guys and check that out because there's two ways about it. Number one, if you have some players to be able to do it, it is usually worth the risk early on. You get some good packs, 45, 35s. But also, what I discovered last year is you can actually trade with a lot of the popular nationalities that are silvers required for this SPCs. Not to mention that as well, a lot of people in the beginning of the game are buying silver cards and non-rare golds for their teams. So you have this double demand on these types of cards and you can set up some sniping filters and just get on the market and see what's up. Obviously, you guys can see here, um, I'm sitting here sniping French strikers at 1.4. Some of them are like selling at 2. You know, I'm not getting sales on every single one of them, but at some point in this video, uh, I'll hopefully show you guys that we are getting some sales. Are we getting sales or are we just being a fraud trader? That's the real question here. Nick, did you get any sales, bro? All right, guys, don't listen to me. I'm not a real trader. I don't know what's going on here. Now, there is going to be some of you guys that clicked on my video that are the biggest pay to win people in the world. And you're like, dude, I'm trying to watch and see what this guy is saying about how I don't mess up in the beginning of the game. All right. Now, this is specifically to you guys who watch my video. OK, let's talk about something. A lot of people and in the past, what has happened is that the meta players have gone up a ton. All right. And they still will in some categories, but not the top metas anymore. This used to happen in FIFA. It doesn't happen anymore. I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. Killing Mbappe last year, right? Look at what his price was on the first day of FIFA. 1.3 mil. Second day of FIFA. 1.4. Third day. Fourth day. 1.5. Look what his price was the week after. 1.42. All right. And then check the price the month after. Okay. So don't get caught up in trying to buy these players early on. Because to be honest, it's going to be the same trend. In my opinion, you say, Nick, why is this a trend in FIFA? 
How is this working? Why, why, why? Well, it's very simple to explain. You have so many people logging onto the game as an RTG, like you or myself, and then you have so many people that are pros or competitive players or people that are dropping their house on this game, no offense, loading up a lot of FIFA points. And then, so you have this thing where there's nobody buying the players in the middle. Maybe that's like uh, Rashford, um, Joe Gomez, those types of players players in the middle between that top tier meta and the baby meta not even we're not even at the baby meta we're buying like non-rare gold silvers all that type of stuff so what happens is that all these people that are spending a lot of money will all compete against each other and eventually the demand goes away because you guys watching and myself we can't even afford these cards for a while so we can't meet them there and then basically these cards correct in price that's kind of what's been happening now i do see that happening again this year i really do i think it's going to happen um i also think we're going to have more supply on these top cards this year uh, just due to the fact that a lot of people are going to get FIFA points with the pre-order. Now, 1.8 mil here. Okay, this is what we're going to talk about next, right? Usually what happens in early access is I just almost like swung my mic off the table. What usually happens in early access is a really good trend to pick up on. When you talk about players that are meta, and what I'm talking about, let me give you guys an example of Renato Sanchez, okay? Renato Sanchez this year is going to be one of the best starter mids in the game. He should rise day by day as access goes on. So if you're a guy that can afford Renato Sanchez in the first day or two of FIFA, go get involved and get him. Couple first hours, he's going to start to rise day by day by day. That's how it's kind of going to work. These types of cards, as days come on and go through, more people are going to be able to start to afford them and put them in their teams. Does that apply to Sun? I'm not sure. Um, but players like that, again, Ben Yedder is a really good example. If you guys segue back and look last year at Ben Yedder, I'll give you guys like two examples of this. Look, these players are hard to get, but if you can afford them and start using a player in your team, it might be worth it because you'll make coins on it. St. Maximin is that way as well. Check out St. Maximin, right? 46K, goes all the way up to 53, up to 60. Now, he did have a Team of the Week candidate uh, potential, so that is a big reason why he started to go up so much. But it, but you know what? They're they're rising. And for me, I remember having Ben Yedder, I think it was two years ago at 13K, and the guy went all the way to 57. Now, Ben Yedder was a little bit different this year because he was in Team of the Week 1, but just keep that in mind. Um, let's check out Marcus Rashford. He, he was a guy that was really popular in the beginning of FIFA. Let's check out what, he, what his trend was. So... There you guys can see it, right? Rashford was 148, and he started to rise even more and more and more. Eventually, second week of FIFA was 200. Second month of FIFA, he was 300. Um, I think Joe Gomez is a really good look. Joe Gomez was an 83 and was super, super popular. I think you guys remember how popular he was. Joe Gomez started off being about 87K. He rose to like 120, 130. And look, you don't even have to go and look at these types of players, guys. They could be lower tier players. I think Enter Millie Tao is a good look. He was an 80 rated. Let's see what he was. So Millie Tao was 12K, 15K day by day. Look, you're getting a 5 to 7K rise every day. So there's also ways you can trade on this too with time zones. Some of these guys, if you're assuming that a guy like Millie Tao, I mean, let's go to the front popular page of Flippin, right? I think that who's a guy that could maybe follow a Millie Tao type trend this year? Uh, just by looking at the front page of Flippin. Who's a guy that's not going to be that many coins, but maybe is going to, you know, I think Romero has an, a, a shout here. You know, he's not on the level of Millie Tao, but he's probably more what I'm talking about. I think Davies is a pretty good example. I would expect Davies to rise 5 to 10K a day as FIFA goes on, as more people can afford the Byron links that first week. I think I think he would be a player that I would be willing to say uh, fits in that category. Um, I think Tomori's a really good example. I think Tomori will probably do the same. So the reason I say this is that there's actually a way to make coins on it. If you're going to assume that these guys are rising 5K every day, Let's just say we get this game on Wednesday. Tomori's like 25, 20. He then goes to 30, then 35. And then by the weekend, he's 40. You can trade on this assumption that they're going to keep rising. And I say that um, because basically, if there's a downtrend at any point in the day, and to the novices that are watching this, this is not offensive. I'm just trying to explain this to you guys. Players trend in price every single day of FIFA. Everything in real life, any collectible, any stock, things go up and down every single day. So it's about finding that time of the day that you feel like you're confident on that dip that you pick them up. And so the ideal situation is that, let's say Tamori on Thursday is 22, and then on Friday he's 27. But maybe on Thursday night, he actually dipped to 21. Or maybe on Friday morning, before he went up to 27, he was still 22. So you have that opportunity to really kind of take advantage of it. Instead of buying the premium or the inflation price on that day, you can kind of get that cheap little window. And I know it's hard to visualize. I know it's hard to explain when we don't have the game, we don't have the market, but I think that's a really good example. Something I wanted to talk to you guys today about is preview packs. Preview packs is not what you're seeing on your screen, um, but they are going to be really important. And I do think EA have already come out and said that they're going to be implemented from the start in FIFA 22 Ultimate Team. Preview packs kill the market. Um, preview packs usually are a 24 hour cycle and you can try them out every day around 1 p.m. Um, 
Eastern Time, 6 p.m. UK. So just understand that this first week of FIFA is going to be a pretty big experiment with preview packs, guys. We've never had that from the beginning. And it's going to be interesting to see how the trends work with preview packs. I'm going to recommend, guys, that you be careful with your teams this year. I think it's a different year compared to any other year. What I've been talking about so far in this video is a little bit of a accumulation of things that we've had over the last couple of years. But pre preview packs are obviously a really new thing in FIFA. And I'm thinking that it might be, we might see like a daily crash on a lot of things that are in packs at 1, 2, 3, and 4 p.m. UK. Sorry, US Eastern time. And then that's probably 6 to 10 p.m. UK at night. And then what you'll probably see is this trend every single day where cards are going down at that time. And then all the way overnight, they're kind of halting their downtrend, maybe rising a little. And then in the mornings, they're booming because in the mornings, UK time, you know, maybe mid noon UK, you know, America's waking up, you've got the UK. You've got parts of Asia at night. You're starting to get every mass user base on the game. And then the supply is disappearing that was there for the previous day. People are buying teams to play with players, to grind rivals, to grind whatever mode they're grinding. And you're seeing player player prices increase. So I really feel like if you guys are looking for a safe way to make coins, wait a couple hours after preview packs every day. Maybe keep 40 to 50% of your budget not in your team. And just invest in some players that you guys think are good. I think Konate is a good one. The, the Liverpool Prem center back. I mentioned Romero. I think anybody that's giving a lot of people success so far. Maybe you guys seeing player reviews on YouTube. Maybe you're on Instagram or Twitter and the FIFA community. And you're like, yo, this guy's crazy. Maybe you're in a Discord and everybody's talking about a guy. Start to look at players that you guys feel like are people that, you know, saying, you know, this is a solidified player. He's really good this year. He's really overpowered. Those are going to be your money makers, okay? It doesn't always have to be who I'm trading. Just look at people. Maybe it's on Foot and Popular page. There's a lot of ways and metrics you guys can check out and see, you know, when somebody's dropping and why they would rebound. You always want to look in the market for a reason why a card would go back up. And those are really good ways to have metrics to see that. So guys, just talking about it really quick. I mean, the number one recommendation I have for you guys starting FIFA is when you do get those hours trying to locate in FIFA Ultimate Team, what is the best way to get coins just from grinding? And I say that because you'll always have the web app to trade. You'll always have the web app to do SPCs to open packs. But what can I do in the gameplay 10 hour grind to get myself the most tradable coins possible? So that's something that right now at this moment, I can't tell you. You guys will probably figure that out this week. But you've got to try to go through and identify that yourself. It's going to be really important that you guys do the digging. You guys look around and see what is going to get me the most coins possible. That's where you should spend your first 10 hours or whatever many hours that you're going to be able to play the game on the console. You should be very, very, very efficient about that, guys. Um, and, and, and do your best to, to locate that. Something really unique you can see about this video here is that I have 37K and I'm 6-0, but I don't actually think I have a team. I think at this point, my team went up a little bit in value. I liquidated it because in the first week of FIFA, it's so important to try to cash out and keep getting as many coins as possible. As I started growing as a streamer and a creator, it got a lot harder for me to kind of show exactly what I was doing to showcase trading-wise what I was doing. And to be honest, over the years, trading for me, I, I just haven't loved it as much. I really do have a passion with streaming. I really enjoy creating content. So I try to always make mix it into my content for you guys but at the end of the day my job as a creator is to really make you guys you know feel a level of entertainment but also at the same time not manipulate the market and i had to learn that the hard way because sometimes in fifa 19 and even early 20 i would manipulate the market and i wouldn't do it on purpose people would just buy what i was buying so what you're seeing here is this is in fifa 21 and basically i'm kind of looking at some cards i'm talking about trends and i'm giving examples now Right away, you could see that there was a Steven Gerrard, and this was like a couple days into FIFA. I was already doing a couple icon trades. I think I had picked up a Steven Gerrard at like 285, and you saw that he sold there at 300. I remember last year I sold that, ended up selling that at 350, but I waited a day or two because I knew that those types of players were gonna rise as people got more coins. It should make sense, right? As people get more coins, a card like Gerard, when people can start, you know, obtaining icons, and you're like, Nick, how can people obtain icons? Well, last year with the Division Rivals coin boost, it wasn't that hard. You could get 20 to 30K with your starter packs, 125K with your coins, and then you can start grinding, and you can start trading, you can start doing League SPCs, and boom, before you know it, some people were buying icons for 200K in the beginning because they were very undervalued. So that's why, it doesn't mean I'm a crazy trader. Here we go. We're looking at Joe Gomez, guys. And Joe Gomez was like, I think, 60K. And then this was the next day. And we were doing a little bit of a market watch here. And he was at 80K. So you can see day by day, you know, starting to go up in value. And that makes a lot of sense. So then there's a lot of things you can do. Obviously, you can see I'm trying to show the viewers that are watching me some sniping filters. If you guys don't know how to snipe, basically what you do, and a lot of you guys on this channel know this, you try to find a filter that's going to give a couple players a floor price. So what I was trying to show was that the floor price for Brazilian center backs was about 2,400 coins. So what I could kind of figure out here is that any 
Brazilian center back that I could snipe under 2,200 coins, I would be able to sell at 2,400 and tax with the EA tax is 5%. I'm making, a, I'm making a decent chunk of coins per card. But what you can really kind of find out is that some of these listings are going to be like 1.2, 1.3. And those are going to be the money makers because if you invest maybe 20, 30 minutes of time on an obscure filter, maybe not anyone's using, you're going to end up making a lot of coins because you will get, as people are opening packs, a lot of guys just sit there opening packs and FIFA points and listing stuff cheap. You will get a lot of deals and make a lot of coins. Something I was doing here was I, I had some coins and I started to try to trade. This is probably day two or three, guys. I started to trade with some higher rated players that were still really cheap. And what I was doing was I was checking their hourly graphs. And I think in this case, I saw Carvajal was selling up at 14.5, 14.7. And the way that this works, and this is what I talked about earlier in my video about that downtrend, right? And I'm kind of finding that downtrend that in that day where like, hey, you know, these guys were rising the day before and now they're down a little bit on this day. I was getting like a 3K, 2K decrease on that moment. And what I was assuming was that day by day, some of these guys that were a little bit more usable, we're going to continue to rise. So I felt like that Carvajal was probably going to be 16 the day after. So what I was doing here was I was patiently trying to get a couple deals and I probably listed them. Nice, nice, Nick. What was that? So I probably listed them a little bit higher, um, you know, just because I had assumed that they were rising, you know, by the minute. So that was really my plan with that one. One of my absolute favorite things to do early on in FIFA, and this is actually from FIFA 19, um, is again, this downtrend method. And there's no name for it. It's just something that I always do. Essentially, what, what I mean by this method is that when a, a player like Lucas Mora is earlier in the day, 12K, and then you're seeing at that moment that maybe he's down, uh, you know, a bit. This is just for example, what's his price? Yeah, so maybe he's down at 11K and all day he's been selling at 12 to 12.5. What I love to do is on that downtrend, try to get a massive undercut. And I think it's so fun early on in FIFA to try it with a player that you wanted to use. And this was in, I think, FIFA 19. And I think I had really wanted to use Lucas Moore at the time. So what I was doing was I was kind of being patient. I was sitting there sniping. And I was doing exactly what I told you guys not to do. Don't spend your time on console during EA Access. What an idiot. I don't know what I'm doing here. Um, and I think this is on September 20th, which is like the second day of the game. So yeah, the things I'm doing for content. But yeah, what I'm doing here, guys, is I'm trying to get a 1,000 coin undercut on a card that I know is going to go back to 12,500. So what I can do then is either try him out on my team while I'm waiting for him to rebound or just go ahead and, you know, list him up on the market and wait for him to sell. So I'm curious to see in here if I actually did get this Lucas Mora um, at any point. I don't think I did, but I think I was being really patient. I think at that point, then I kind of moved on. I tried Premier League, you know, Team of the Week informs. But there's a lot of things that you can try here, guys. There really is. And I'm wondering if I pulled the trigger on anything in this video. I want to see that coin. I want to see that coin tally go down. But yeah, silver trading, bronze trading, even bronze pack methods. Early, bronze pack method early on is not a bad shout, guys, at all. Um, it, it is not. Uh, right now, I am looking like a fraud trader in this video because I didn't buy anything. So I don't know what was the point of showing you guys this. One of my major, major tips for the earlier on part of next year is please don't invest too many coins in your starter team. It's really important early on that you guys leave enough coins to be able to trade with those coins, even if you don't know how to trade. I'm telling you guys, this year you're going to figure it out. I'm going to show you. It's a lot easier than you think. You don't even need to know any of these graphs, these complex things. You don't need to know any of it. I can make it very simple for you guys. You're just going to have to kind of filter and get in this habit of a couple things on the market, spending a couple time, times of the day devoting it to it. But I think the main thing that I would recommend is never spend over 60, 70% of your coins early on in your team because of two reasons, okay? The first one is that you don't need a crazy team early on. There's no reason to build a crazy team. Everybody in the beginning of FIFA is always rocking a starter team. This year, I'm seeing a lot of Liga Nulls teams. I'm seeing Bundesliga. I'm seeing Serie A. So don't worry, man. You guys do not need to make this crazy, crazy team and try to compete or kill everybody in the beginning of the game. It's just, it's not necessary. Don't do it, all right? Spend like 20, 30% of your coins in your team. Get a nice goal team, you know, maybe some pace, maybe some five at the back. I don't know what you have to do to make it work, but try to make it work with as little coins as possible because where you're going to really, you know, have your value is keeping those coins to be able to trade, keeping those coins to be able to day trade with those players that you kind of are looking at. Maybe keeping those point, coins to invest in some players going out of packs. One of the best ways to make coins in FIFA 21 was buying gold cards that investors were going to buy um, basically for a team of the week out of packs investment. But what I mean by that is back in the day, if Alan St. Maxman was going to get a team of the week one, not everybody would know that he was going to go out of packs. So he would naturally, Alan St. Maxman would rise as his team of the week card went in packs because his gold actually went out of packs. So obviously, what happens when a gold card goes out of packs? 
well it loses its supply so what happens early on when that card is in demand well it goes up in price and so that's kind of how it works and that's the supply and demand situation uh that we have so basically what i wanted to mention to you guys um is that what you guys can do now in fifa these days is you can actually sell to investors because every investor tries to do this if you feel like alan say maxman has a good team league performance a lot of the time during the actual match when he scores or people think he's gonna get a team of the week everybody goes and buys the gold and then what happens is as he goes up he drops a lot at night and you guys can pick him up at night and sell him the next day to the investors because they'll come running back they try to run up the floor and that's actually a really funny trading method that you guys can do but as i mentioned guys it's also really 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 important with sbcs to just keep your keep your coins to be able to do some of these hybrid leagues hybrid nations these are some of the best SBCs in fifa every year and you get them at the start and i don't see why this year we wouldn't be able to get them at the start so they're under usually i think advanced SBCs. you've got the lead uh, they put them under uh, foundations this year but obviously these all went up in price because of i think a couple of factors but as you can see hybrid nations is 30k okay you can do at least three of these SBC squads i think elite eight one of them has loyalty there's a lot of decent packs here. You talk about 12K for a rare players pack. Now that will probably be 20K early on, but still it might be worth the gamble. It might be that much more worth, you know, investing and in trying to hit the lotto with that one, you know, than really investing too many coins in your team. I think foot draft is also something that we got to talk about. I think, you know, there's a rumor that they are going to upgrade the foot draft rewards this year. That would not shock me. It's been pretty similar for a couple of years now. I think they will. Um, if you're a player that I would say finishes gold one or above in the weekend league, it is probably worth investing 15,000, 15,000 coins into a foot draft. Um, it really is this year. I think so. Um, you know, even when you get three wins, I think we get two or more wins. It's going to be worth it. You're going to make your coins back between the non rares, between some of this. We don't have squad fitness anymore. What's the one consumable that sells a lot of the chem styles, the chem styles, man, those ones sell like a lot. Some of the managers, you know, you get those Brazilian French managers, uh, early on, not French, it's Brazil and Netherlands is the Dutch one. Um, those ones sell for a lot. So that wouldn't be a bad idea. And then the number one thing that everybody's asking about is, Nick, what do I do with my FIFA points this year? Like, what's the best way to do it? Uh, we're going to do a video on that, but hold your horses, guys. And the reason I say that is that the FIFA points that everybody's getting with this Ultimate Edition, you don't actually get those till September 27th. So it's not that relevant to this video. It's not really relevant in terms of how to start FIFA the best way, because, well, you're going to play five days probably before that without the FIFA points. But what I did want to talk about with FIFA points today is something that is really important. What we're going to see with these FIFA points this year is something that we've never seen in FIFA. Now, the mass user base is getting FIFA points. Now, what I want to connect this to is the gold packs that we used to get. If you pre-ordered FIFA, I think it was the Champions and the Ultimate, you guys used to get rare gold packs on Sunday night with squad battles. And what we used to see on FIFA early on in the first couple weeks on Sunday nights was the biggest market crash. Every single gold in the game would just die. It would just go down so much in price. And the reason was the supply would just kill the demand. There was not enough players on the game being able to buy any of the cards that were plopping onto the market. And everybody that was packing these cards was listing them up because it's early on in FIFA and people want their coins. So what's going to be the connection here is that we are going to see something crazy when everybody gets these fifa points on september 27th which i don't know what day of the week that is it's going to be crazy we are going to see a very very big market crash in my opinion for a couple of minutes or hours we're going to talk about why now to counteract that what could happen is that a lot of people are expecting such a big crash and this reminds me of a couple of promos we had this year where people expect such a big crash they sell their teams and then there is actually like a little crash after people already panic sold because we do get the supply where people are just listing these cards under huge undercuts huge price drops and then within 10 minutes the market starts booming that could happen however 4600 fifa points is a lot if i'm spending 4600 fifa points i'm probably spending 150 fifa points a pack on the 700 uh 7.5 case you know maybe there's a promo pack available at that point i don't think so it's probably going to take me 15 minutes 20 25 minutes to sort through my packs to list some of my items and it's probably a 30 minute process so what you're going to see is a lot of people are spending that time opening their packs not on the market and i am assuming there might be a pretty significant crash so I do recommend when you guys do get on the, the 22nd, that's why specifically this year, I'm recommending that you guys don't build a crazy team to all my RTG guys out there, because I just think it's not going to be worth it. I think that even those top players like we talked about, those Joe Gomez's, those types of players, when the 27th hits, you're going to have an opportunity to buy those guys for a lot cheaper than what they were. Now, if you miss that buy window, you're going to be in trouble because they're going to go up a lot. And I say this because, guys... 
What goes around comes around. If Does that even make sense to this? I don't even think that makes sense, but whatever. Let's just roll with it. What's going to happen? And uh, guys, this is so much information today. So thank you guys for listening. I really want to help you guys this year. I really want you guys to do well, do big things. Um, the relevance of all of this is that People are going to cash in on their players they're packing, and then they're going to want to go spend their coins. There's going to be this one point where everybody's going to run onto the market and say, I got to spend my coins. I got to build my team. I got to do all of that. And that's when the market is going to boom. So you'll probably see for the first couple days of FIFA, I like the Joe Gomez example. I like Millie Tao. You know, these guys rising, rising, rising day by day. You'll probably see on the 25th, 26th, 27th, some of that panic starts to set in, specifically the 26th and the 27th. We'll then get that supply. They'll probably drop a decent bit in those two days compared to the previous one or two days, the 24th to 25th. And then they're going to rock it. They're going to rock it. That's my opinion, guys. But again, we'll see. And I'm not always right. I really am not always right. Um, and, I, and I think that's mostly what I wanted to talk about with you guys today. I really don't want to overcomplicate things. I just wanted to give you guys some of my starter tips. There's not many secrets to that other, you know, the, other than that. This year, you're also with the pre are going to get a Team of the Week pack. Um that that once the watch player is going to be on october 1st i don't really have anything else to say i mean i really think that's it i think be smart with your coins early on D I, I don't think i need to say this type of stuff don't spend coins uh don't spend packs with coins or don't buy packs with coins guys that's a terrible idea i don't care if your roommate or your friend or whatever makes you do that don't do that um if there's anything that i missed in this video or anything that you guys want to see please just let me know in the comments down below I can try to go through and maybe do another video, maybe a part two. If you guys want to see a part two, if there's other things that I could bring to you guys, um, the best way to do that is maybe drop a comment or a like, or maybe tweet me and just say like, Nick, I really thought this video was good. You know, can you talk about this? You know, obviously for me guys, I'm not going to be able to play this game. As I mentioned in the last video, two days early, because I'm not, um, you know, I'm not going to get that EA access that the creators get. So I really have the next couple days to invest my time in creating videos that you guys can go and reference to the first couple days, the first couple weeks of FIFA. And that's really my goal. I want to have videos that are very usable for you guys uh, to kind of go back to, to hear some of the advice um, and all that good stuff. So as well as guys uh, on Twitter, just to give you guys the heads up. No, I'm not verified. I, I, it's very funny. Um, we have a giveaway going on with Footbin. We've got a lot of entries. It is available to all consoles, all regions. It's... Uh, it's a it's a FIFA 22 giveaway. We're giving away 10 copies with Footbin. I think we're giving away $90 or 100 to 10 people. So I can send it on PayPal to anybody in the world. Uh, so if you want to join that, it is on Twitter. I think we're ending it on September 22nd. So there's four days left. Um, and yeah, I think that's it, guys. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys soon. Peace.